Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about section 12.4, all about the cross product. As you can see, I've called this part zero, because in this video we're going to be talking about matrices and the determinants of matrices. As you'll see, this is an important step in determining the cross product. It makes the cross products much easier. So we're just going to use this video to get reacclimated to the world of matrices and determinants. So uh, a two by two matrix, matrix singular, is an array of four numbers arranged into two rows and two columns. The order here does matter, but we're mostly going to be talking about square matrices, so you don't have to worry about that. More about matrices in linear algebra course. So for example, we would use square brackets and we'd have two rows, A, B, and C, and D. Four entries and there'd be numbers in those entries, whatever you want those numbers to be. We would want to do a determinant of a matrix is denoted with straight lines. Another use of that magnitude type symbol, the absolute value type symbol. And this magnitude, this determinant would be, I would cross this diagonal and this diagonal, I would do the products and I'd subtract them. So I'm going to note that the order here matters. The order matters a great deal. Whenever we're using subtraction, we need to make sure we tell ourselves the order matters. So an example of a real situation, the determinant of the matrix 2, 1, negative 6, 4, we would do 2 times 4, 8, minus negative 6 times 1, or 14. And 14 would be the determinant of that 2 by 2 matrix. But the most important type of matrix we're going to use in this course is the 3 by 3 matrix. So that's where we're going to have three rows and three columns. So for instance, I'm just going to go down A1, A2, A3. You'll see why I'm doing this eventually. B1, B2, and B3. C1, C2, and C3. So each row has three elements, and I'm using a different letter for the row. Now the idea is that the determinant, and sometimes we'll just use DET for determinant, determinant of a three by three is based on two by two recursive definition. If you don't know what I mean by recursive definition, I mean we're gonna use several two by twos to define this three by three. So we can use, it's like a helpful fact, we can use any row or column in principle to expand the determinant the determinant but in this class for cross products which is the main reason we're going to be talking about determinants in this pro class for cross products use first row So I'm sure you're saying, I don't know what the heck you're talking about, recursive definition, use the first row, we can use any row we want, whatever. 
So here I'm going to go notate the 3x3 three three determinant by using those straight lines. B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3. We're going to basically make minor matrices using cofactor expansion. Very technical words. Here's all we're saying. I'm going to look at my first row exclusively. And if I think about the first row versus the first column, I'm going to be doing a cofactor expansion based on A1. So based on A1, this is what the cofactor expansion looks like. It takes A1 and multiplies by the matrix B2, B3, C2, C3. So notice that's a scalar times a determinant. And the determinant's a scalar, so this is a scalar times a scalar. One more time, I'm going to highlight where these numbers are coming from. So these numbers are from here. And that's what we would call the minor matrix based on the A1 term in that cofactor expansion. So now we're going to continue along the first row. And now we're going to look at the second column. So when you do this, the most important thing you can remember is to subtract this coefficient. We're going to use A2 because that's right there in the intersection here. And we're going to use that as our determinant. We're going to use the remainder as our determinant. The remaining entries is B1, B3, C1, C3. Erasing the highlighting again. So I'm definitely not going to be able to do all this highlighting in the actual cross product video. First row is how we're expanding third column. Well, A3 is the intersection of those two actions. So we're going to take the element A3. And again, this minor matrix is easy to see now. Those two. So we're talking about B1, B2, C1, C2. And if you wanted to, you could fully show what that's going to end up looking like. You can now finish the determinants here and then we get really messy looking. B2, C3 minus B3, C2. The point is I don't want to have to write that every time I do a three by three. It's gonna look much nicer with numbers, but the point is I don't want to remember this ugly pattern. C1 plus A3 B1, C2 minus B2, C1. I promise you we're going to do an example with numbers in a second. It doesn't get this bad. One more time, the point is with this idea of a two by two, I won't have to remember such an abstract looking formula. Please keep that in mind when you watch the next video. So we're going to do a brief example and then we're going to end this video. So example. If we're going to find the determinant of 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 0, 1, negative 5, 4, 2. Try to find the determinant of this guy expanding along the top row. You should be able to do that pretty smoothly. Here I go. 3, 2, 1. So we're using that top row again. First column, we'd be talking about 1 times the determinant of 0, 1, 4, 2. Fancy erasing that highlighter only. Oh, man. Second column. Now, careful when you do that second column, we're going to subtract the 2. We always are going to subtract this 
cofactor expansion, this minor matrix. 3, 1, negative 5, 2. Can you see where I got that 2 by 2 matrix? Hopefully you're checking your own work here. Third column. So negative 1. It's a plus, but this time it's negative 1 times 3, 0, negative 5, 4. And the point is, the rest of these are pretty easy to simplify. Go ahead and try that now. If you couldn't get this matrix cofactor expansion done, try at least doing these two by twos. Three, two, one. Zero minus three, four. Six plus five. Careful and you see why it's plus five. So I'm doing three times two minus one times negative five. But one times negative five is negative five. Minus a minus is a plus plus negative one times 12 minus zero. It's 12 minus zero. So overall I get negative four minus 22 minus 12, which is something like negative 34, negative 38. And what does that mean? What does that represent? We will see in a future section or maybe even in your future class. Right now, we're going to use that to apply, sorry, we're gonna apply this technique to find the cross product of two vectors in the next video. Bye.